To Joe Biden, other human beings only exist to the extent they can be used for partisan ends, so it shouldn't surprise you that on Friday he used the story of a 10-year-old rape victim to push for more abortion. According to Joe Biden, the laws in Ohio forced a 10-year-old rape victim to flee to Indiana to get that abortion. Now, the White House never vetted the facts of that story. as the President of the United States saying things that no one checked, but the facts didn't make any sense. On Monday, for example, the Attorney General of Ohio said there would not be a reason for this child to flee to Ohio in the first place. Watch. Ohio's heartbeat law has a medical emergency exception uh, broader than just the life uh, of the mother. Uh, she, th This young girl, if she exists and if this horrible thing actually happened to her, breaks my heart to think about it, she did not have to leave Ohio to find treatment. So the obvious headline here was not about abortion. It was about the crime committed against a child. Who raped a 10-year-old? That was our first question. Nobody seemed interested at all in learning who this person was. And maybe there was a reason for that. In fact, there was another moral to the story. Apparently, the rapist was an illegal alien. The Columbus Dispatch is reporting tonight that a 27-year-old called Gershon Fuentes has confessed to raping the 10-year-old child on multiple occasions. Victor Davis Hansen is a senior fellow with the Hoover Institution, and we're happy to have him join us tonight. Professor, thanks so much for coming on. So Thank what you. do you take from this story? Well, it's a tragic story, Tucker, but it, it gets more mysterious every day because apparently this terrible, horrendous act was reported on the 22nd or nearabouts in June. And here we are on July 13th, 14th, and we're only now learning about who did this. In other words, this perpetrator apparently was not charged or arraigned, and yet people knew that he had coerced a young, maybe at the time, a nine-year-old to be pregnant. And so the question is, why now, at this belated date, are we learning who he was? And maybe, I mean, a, a naive might say, well, it was because people had questioned the veracity of the story, and people, for whatever nebulous reasons, didn't want to reveal his identity until revealing his identity was the only mechanism for substantiating the story in the first place. But in that time, it seems like a person who had a proclivity to have, you know, coercive sex with minors was still out there. And we don't know what he was doing. He should have been, as soon as they reported the act, he should have been arraigned immediately. And then the next thing was the attorney general mentioned the heartbeat law at six weeks. But the abortionist who became the spokesman for the story said, well, the abortion was committed, uh, was um, done six weeks and three days. I mean, c can't you, why was it so close to that date? It was almost as if, if you knew about this act, you had a, 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 a method inside Ohio, if you believe that that was a proper course, it would have been legal within six weeks rather than to go over to Indiana and then be told, well, it was six weeks and three days. It doesn't, the whole, all of these details, they reek of uh, a political weaponization of the case, which is tragic because we have a nine-year-old, I guess at the time of the act, she was nine, and she's being used for political purposes, which is terrible. And then we have this perpetrator, and now we learn that he is here illegally from Guatemala, and he's residing illegally, and no one has, uh, he was, the act was reported, and for two, almost three weeks, he hasn't been charged. So it, we don't, we're going to have to wait for more details, but it, it's, it's mysterious. It's terrible what's going on. So it sounds like in this case, as in pretty much every case we've reported on for the past five years, the first version was a lie. Everything is partisan propaganda and kind of believe nothing at first. Maybe that's the takeaway. It reminds me a lot of the whipping story that Joe Biden also promulgated yeah. about Border Patrol's whipping people. And we found out only later that it wasn't true at all. And then there were desperate efforts to bring in more evidence to sort of incriminate them to save the reputation of the president. So I think what's happened is that this fellow was finally charged when they needed some substantiation of this story, but they didn't seem, they seemed reluctant to charge him quicker and more and almost immediately because they felt the story would be believable and be useful on its own merits. And then when people questioned it and wanted details, only then did they start releasing the details, which caused only more mystery. But the whole thing is, is I, I think it's, it's terrible because it shows you that People are using a 10-year-old 
and the, yeah. and protecting in some cases an illegal alien. If that happened to be true, that they deliberately delayed arraigning him until they needed evidence to substantiate this useful story. It's it's, it's right. terrible. They don't care about people. They care about power. Victor Davis Hanson, appreciate your coming on tonight. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.